let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for another day and knowing that your steadfast love is new every morning towards us is very comforting. We honor you and give you all the praise. Accept our thanks as we gather this morning. Let your word minister to us as we start the day afresh. In your presence, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to today's morning devotion in the presence of God. So let the high praises of God be in our mouth as we worship him. Light of the world, we step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted. Glorious in heaven above. Upon that cross, I'll never 
Amen. May the Lord empower us to surrender, to surrender all unto him. Now we're going to our general prayers, and I will be leading the prayer this morning. The word of God instructs us to pray for the body of Christ. So this morning, you are going to be praying for your church. So you mentioned the name of your church where it's applicable. And let us pray. Our first prayer this morning says, Father, thank you for placing me in a church family and for your manifold blessings upon the church, upon the church where I belong. Father, thank you for placing me in Christ Business Center. Please mention the name of your church. Thank you, Lord, for placing me in Christ Business Center. Thank you, Lord, for your manifold blessings upon the church. Father, I give praise unto you, and I just say thank you this morning. The psalmist says, unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that thy name is near thy wondrous works. Declare, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father, for Christ's business center, the church where you have placed me. Thank you for your mighty hand that is sustaining the church. Thank you, Father, for the hope that we have in you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. The second prayer says, pull down and destroy every obstacle of the enemy, limiting the enlargement of your church. Thank you, Lord. Father, by your mighty power, I destroy every evil altars, every evil forces and stronghold, limiting the enlargement of my church, Christ Business Center. Second Corinthians says the weapon we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Therefore, we thank God. I thank you, Father, for that divine power. I thank you, Lord because you will make us strong for you. The word says, understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire, so he shall destroy them and he shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said unto thee. Father, you are the consuming fire. Therefore consume every effort of the enemy bringing down or trying to bring down my church, Christ Business Center, in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Now we go to prayer number, number three. And prayer number three says, Father, in the name of Jesus and by the Holy Ghost, ignite Ignite the revival fire of the kingdom in our church, Christ Business Center, bringing about the manifestation of the kingdom of God in our midst. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the revival of your kingdom in my church. Mention the name of your church, please, Christ Business Center. Let the fire continue to burn on your altar, living active life in Christ as a church. Let every member of my church have the desire to begin to live in holiness and set us apart for your glory. The psalmist says, then we will not turn away from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Thank you, Father, as you activate your fire of revival in my church, Christ Business Center. Purify us with your refining fire, O Lord, and let your light continue to shine through us. In Jesus' name, I have prayed, amen. And now we're going to go to the next prayer, prayer number four. Ask the Lord to pour out his spirit. Ask the Lord to pour out his spirit upon the church afresh, bringing about the manifestation of signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Father, pour out your spirit upon us afresh in my church Christ business center, bringing about the manifestations of signs and wonders in Jesus name. We thank you God for your Holy Spirit. We need your power for your spirit upon us in Christ business center. All power belong unto you. Without your power, we can do nothing. Therefore, let your power come down and overcome us in that church, in my church Christ business center for the manifestation of great works 
to bring glory to you, O Lord. Thank you, Father, for your promise, for the church, for the church which we, you, which you have placed me. Father, I thank you. And with you, I know that we can do all things in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 57 says, your word says, for this saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirits of the humble and to revive the hearts of the contrite hearts. Joel 2 says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your souls and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions and also upon servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Thank you, Father, for your spirit within us. And thank you, Father, for your spirit upon us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. And we go to the next prayer, which is prayer number five. Prayer number five says, Father, you that built the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I am asking that you visit and build, uh, my, build my church. Mention the name of your church, please. Build Christ Business Center Church and increase us with men like flocks in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you are the builder. Your word says, except God builds, the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen walk it but in vain. I pray now that you visit and build my church, build Christ Business Center Church, send men all around the city to come and find their places in that church and begin to serve you. Increase us, O Lord. Increase Christ Business Center numerically and strengthen us, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, your word says in the book of Ezekiel, then the heathen that are left around about, you shall know that I, the Lord, built during places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus said the Lord, I will increase them with men like a flock. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your promise to visit us and build my church. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, we have prayed, amen. And then we go to prayer number six. Prayer number six says, Father, turn the captivity of every member of the church, Christ's business center into laughter and make us rejoice before this year is over in Jesus' mighty God, in Jesus' mighty God, with all things are possible. I pray that you make every member of Christ Business Center laugh and rejoice before the end of this year. Father, fill our mouth with laughter and fill our lips with shouts of joy in the name of Jesus. For the psalmist says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When the Lord bring it back, the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and all Israel shall be glad. Thank you, Father. For you will yet fill our mouth. You will fill our mouth in my church Christ business center with laughter. And you fill our lips with shouts of joy in the name that is above all name. In Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. And we go to the last prayer, which is prayer number seven. And it says, Father, by your spirits, quicken and awaken every member of my church. Mention the name of your church, please. Quicken and awaken every member of my church, Christ Business Center, to our covenant responsibilities of service. The service that you have called us onto for, and the service of great commission. My Father in heaven, I pray for every member of my church, Christ Business Center, to be the king, to be kingdom-minded people, to just want to serve you with a joyful heart, seeking you. For the psalmist says, behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness, Father. Arise, help us and help me in my church and quicken us. I pray for your grace, Father, for your desire for good works in that church. Father, your word says you will quicken me 
then I can call upon you. Hear my voice, dear Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Quicken us, every member of Christ's business center. The word says in Luke 10, therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers unto his field. Father, we just thank you. I thank you for my Church Christ Business Center. I pray that you will send divine helpers unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I pray this morning, may Christ Business Center a light of the world, a city that is set on a high, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. May Christ Business Center strong and powerful for your use to glorify your name in Jesus' mighty name. I have prayed. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that prayer session. It is now time for the word of God, the word of life. Our Bible reading today will be taken from the book of Romans. Let us open our books to Romans 10. And this morning, let's invite our brother, Brother Adetaiwo, as he reads for us, Romans 10, 1 to 15. Romans 10, 1 to 15. Welcome, Brother Adetaiwo. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So I read Romans 10, 1 to 15. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will ascend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus, and if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord overall is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful at the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. 
Amen. Amen. Thank, amen. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Aditaiwo. It is now time to hear what God has prepared for us. May we hear his voice this morning. Let us receive our brother as we welcome him. Our brother is here to lead us, uh, to give us the charge this morning. Brother Uchena, welcome. Good morning, saints. Glory be to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Give us the opportunity to hear from your voice. As you have been said, blessed is he that hear it, that come. Let's go and worship him. Thank you, Father, for the word this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. My topic is the confession factor in sowing and reaping. The confession factor in sowing and reaping. Um, just want to say thank you to Pastor for the opportunity to give this message. Uh, it's blessed my heart to come and give the word to the saints. Hallelujah. So the confession factor in sowing and reaping. You know that God has given everyone the measure of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So from our reading this morning, you can see that the people of Israel somehow did not know that the Messiah already came and they were rejecting um, Jesus Christ. But confessing your faith is the first step in receiving the salvation of the Lord. When you open this Bible, you are faced with you, the truth of God. You will see the promises of God. You will see the principles of God. And you will see the prophecies of God. And one of the prophecies and the promises is that you have to receive it. Let us look at the, the word this morning where he's saying all that for you to be saved, you have to confess it. The word of faith is in your mouth, but you have to speak it. You remember that um, Haman have done a, sent out a degree to annihilate all the people of Israel because he hated uh, Mordecai. And Mordecai called Esther, called Esther, and told him he was. Uh, he wasn't, she was not made the queen. And Mordecai told Esther, if you keep quiet, that is Esther chapter, chapter four, verse 14. If you keep quiet at this time, like this, deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from somewhere other than the, this place. But you and your relatives will die. Who knows if perhaps you were made queen for such a time as this? Had it been that Esther have kept quiet, they should have annihilated the whole of these people and even her should go. So Esther took it upon herself to fast and pray. Brothers and sisters, you have to open up your mouth to speak up for yourself. The enemy has planned to kill and destroy. As he said in John 10, 10. The enemy is a thief. He has come to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come to give us life as, uh, abundantly. Jesus has come to save the lost. You have to speak up for yourself. You have to declare what God has said. So this morning, we, have, we read uh, in the book of um, Romans, chapter 10. He said that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart, he, that the power that raised Christ from the dead, you will be saved. So you need to start making those confessions. Now the Lord that God has given you the power. From the abundance of mouth, the mouth, the, the, the heart speaks. You have to speak from your heart. You have to declare what God has said. If you keep your mouth shut, the enemy will try to annihilate you and kill you and destroy your life. But you must confess what God has given you. Do not take it for granted. The salvation is not easy. Christ paid a ransom for your life on the cross. So this morning, I just wanted to fo for us to focus on confessing of the seed and faith. Let's start with the first one, 
the first one I want to go to say everybody's open your Bible, please. Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. You have to make these confessions for yourself. If you keep quiet, the enemy will have to annihilate you and your family. But begin to confess what God has said. God has given us the power. The, the, the power of the tongue. The life is in the mouth of the, the tongue. Life and death is the mouth of the tongue. Who, he who knows how to use it, we use it wisely. And we, we benefit from it. So do not keep quiet at this time. Who knows whether God has given you, called you to, to preach the gospel at this time. So now it is time for us to start confessing, confessing. Let's go to Exodus chapter, oh, I'm sorry, Genesis. Genesis chapter 8, um, verse, um, verse 22. Remember, the, uh, Noah and his family came out from, uh, from the flood, and God made a sacrifice for them. Let's read chapter 22 together, please. Okay. He said, why it remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Shall not cease. So the prayer you have to pray here, you need to open your mouth and make confessions. Therefore, I sow my seed in faith knowing that the law of seed time and harvest is working in my life. So make that confession this morning. Therefore, I sow my seed in faith, knowing that the law of seed time and harvest is working in my life. So you have to sow a financial seed in the kingdom. Either you are going out for the gospel, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ, or you, you sow a seed of giving financial seed in the church, or you sow a seed of tithe and offering in the church, because God has said that seed time and harvest will not change. Brothers and sisters, this law is given by God, is a mandate. If you, if you neglect the law, if you neglect this law, you are sinning. You are sinning. It's a sin for you to neglect the law of God. The promises of God are given. So this is the time for you to start making this declaration, confessions every day. I Therefore, I sow my seed in faith. Even if it's, if it's $10 you have, even if it's $100, whatever you have, whatever God are putting in your heart, I don't know. Sow into this kingdom, sow into this platform. You see, therefore, I sow. I sow. Because God has given you something. I've got seed. I want you to start making this declaration. I've got seed. I've got seed. God has given me seed to sow. I've got seed. I've got seed. So you have to sow. Therefore, I sow my seed in faith, knowing that the law of seed time and harvest is working in my life. If you don't sow, don't expect it to receive anything. The Bible says in Proverbs that he that so he that scattered the seed prospers, but he that will hear his hand suffers loss. Don't suffer loss in your life. The next uh, verse I wanted you to, to see again is go to Mark, Mark chapter 4. I'm gonna read it and we're gonna make our declaration. Mark chapter 4, and I want us to read verse um. Verse 26 and 27. He that soweth will reap. He that soweth will reap if you don't give up. Mark chapter 4, and then I will read verse 26 and 27, and we make our declaration. Okay. Uh, 26 said, and he said, he said, the kingdom of God is a man, is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and raise by day, and the seed shall sprout and grow. He himself does not know how, how, how they grow. How this, the seed sprout, should sprout and grow, and he himself does not know how. You see here, 
you have the seed to sow. He that scattered, he the kingdom is telling you that if a man, as he, as a man, should scatter a seed on the ground and the sheep and the, and he, and should sleep night and day, night and day by day, and the seed should sprout and grow, he himself does not know how. So you can declare that today I am expecting, therefore. I am expecting every seed I have planted to produce, to grow up, and bring fruit. I want you to make that confession. Today, I therefore, I am expecting every seed that I have sown and plant to grow, to grow, and produce, and bring forth fruit. So, you see that you have to sow the seed. You have the seed. If you, if you sow a seed, it will grow, but you don't know how that seed grows. But God, that is power of God that makes the seed to grow. So your job is to sow a seed. I've got seed. I want you to make this declaration. I've got seed. He that The Bible said that if you do not sow, the Bible said that uh, uh, it's only a fool that sleeps in the harvest because he doesn't know that the, the people say, I have come, I have landed, I have got this, I've got that. But you don't know that when you are sleeping, your seed should be growing. You should have already planted a seed. You should not, if you eat the seed that, that you have today, God has made this whole entire system to produce. You have to plant the seed. So you should be every morning blessing the seed in your hand. Let's go to um, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. You have to plant the seed. The seed must produce. But if you don't plant the seed, let me, let me give you this. If you refuse to plant the seed, you will not gain a harvest. The seed that you have your on your hand today is for your future. So if you eat your seed in your hand today, you have eaten your future. So you must plant the seed in the ground, like the sower, like a wise person. So let's go to Genesis chapter one. This is the creation of the world, and God is creating seed. Please write these scriptures down for your for you to go back and read it because it's has blessed my heart. Verse 11 said, Then God said, Let us let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And, is, and it was so. So this is this is what the, this is I, I, this verse blessed me a lot. He said that each seed will bring forth its kind. Each seed will bring out its kind. If you plant a a pear, you will get a pear. If you plant an orange, you're gonna produce a fruit an orange. If you plant a finance, if you sow seed of finance, you're gonna get a seed of finance. So it must bring a seed of its kind. So this is your prayer this morning. Make, start making this declaration with me. Therefore, I sow my seed in faith. No, okay. I said that, now. okay. I have sown my financial seed and I'm expecting them to grow and multiply and of the same kind and it will bring of the same kind and it will bring finance to me. So as especially financially. Let's repeat this again. I am, I have sown my seed. I am expecting a financial, my finance to grow and multiply of the same kind financially. So if you plant an orange, you are going to get an orange. If you plant apple, you are going to get an apple fruit. But if you plant so a financial seed, you are going to get increase in your finance. That's how it works, brothers and sisters. If you understand.
Elder, you're muted. Let's let's declare this one and then we'll we'll pray. Um Psalm 115. Psalm 1, 115, 14, and uh 14 and 15. Psalm 115, 14 and 15. So whatever you sow, you will reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap. So 115, Psalm 115 said, therefore, I sow God. Um, just give me a minute, please. 115, this is our last one, and then uh, we'll pray. So verse 14 says, may, may, may the Lord, may the Lord give you increase more and more, and you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, whom who make heaven and earth. You see, this is a prayer that you have to pray for yourself. This is a prayer you have. Therefore, since I've become God, I've given me seed of sowing, and I'm expecting more and more blessing. I'm expecting more and more ble financial blessing in my life. Since God has given me seed to sow, I'm expecting more and more blessing in my life. I expect more and more blessing in my life. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Let us go to our prayers, please. Remember all these uh, verses and use it to pray in, in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he lift his goodness upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, uh, Elder Uchena, for the exaltation of the word of God. It is now time for the most important session of this morning devotion. This is your time with your heavenly father. Let us open our mouth, confess, and thank Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. It's a solemn moment when you pour your hearts before him. He's waiting to hear from you, and we shall be called back shortly.
We thank God so much this morning for his blessings, for his amazing word that has come to us and for the opportunity to go before him, to pray, to bring our petitions before him. And we believe as we pray, we believe that he answers because in Jeremiah 33, verse three, he says, call unto me and I will answer and I will show you wondrous things that you do not know about. So we thank God for the opportunity to come before him. We also thank God so much for the word that has been brought to us today concerning sowing and reaping. And I know we know this from life. Everything has a consequence. Whatever we do has positive and negative consequences. Whatever we put out, we get it back. However, in the kingdom, we are so blessed that because of the blood of Jesus Christ, whatever we sow in faith, to God, we don't just reap it back, we reap exponentially. And so we thank God for the word that has come to us today, the declarations that we have made. It's very important for you to make confessions, positive confessions, confessions that are backed by the word of God. So when you make those confessions, make sure you research, find the word of God that supports your area of need. Today, our, our elder Uchenna has talked a lot about finances and you're sowing financially because that's the area, the biggest area of need for everyone. We all go to work because we need our finances to be blessed. But it is amazing what God says concerning our finances, that when we sow and we add faith to it and we add the word of God to it, that God breathes on it the breath of exponential blessings and so that word was just apt it was a good word it was a word that came at the right time for each one of us so we thank god and so as you sow as you as you take the seed that you have in your hand and you sow it to god god will bless it he will multiply it beyond your po your possible imagination that's what he does. He likes to shock us. He likes to surprise us with great things that we do not even expect. So we thank God for that word. We honor him because we are going to practice that. I have written down those scriptures. Uh, I love Psalm 115 that we read last, uh, verse 14. It says, may the Lord cause you to flourish. Flourishing is not just, oh, being well, doing well. Flourishing is that blessing that is evident. It is huge. So may the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That is a huge blessing. I also like verse 15 because it says the highest heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has been given to mankind. This is where God has put us so that we can flourish. The blessings of God upon our lives will be upon us, will show right here where we live. So mind your confessions. Mind the words that come out of your mouth. Make sure they are fashioned by the word of God. If you're given to complaining, Remember, you will reap the seed of complaining. So do not complain. Do not murmur. Do not find negative things to talk about. In every situation, the Bible tells us to give thanks because there is an opportunity, no matter how bad it looks, there's always an opportunity for us to be thankful in every situation. So mind the confessions of your mouth so that the Lord can bless you. Because I've heard somebody say, what praising is to God, complaining is to the enemy. So when you're complaining, you're not praising God. You're praising somebody else. So just be careful what you say. Be mindful of the words that come out of your mouth. Let them be words that are edifying. That's what the Bible tells us. But above all things, confess. Use the word of God. Use it faithfully and God will bless you abundantly. Remember, this uh, program runs Monday through Friday. Um, today's Wednesday. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 5, 5 a.m. Mountain Time. Also, on Thursdays, every Thursday night, 
uh, Pastor Tinji has a program that um, is for saints that would like to just get a deeper understanding of the word of God. It is a gathering of saints to come and just ask questions. Uh, a lot of times we bring issues that we don't understand or parts of the word that don't make a lot of sense and it begins to make a lot of sense. So if you have time on Thursday, please join us Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time and you will be abundantly blessed. Um, so right now, I bless you again with Psalm 115, verse 14. May the Lord cause you to flourish, both you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. As you go today, um, confess the word of God. Let it bless you abundantly. And we will meet again tomorrow. So let us say the goodness. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you.